Did you know that Basil Rathbone only got to win two on-screen fights in his entire career, and that one of them is in the 1940 Mark of Zorro? But spoilers, no, it's not the fight we're covering today. It is where he fights a left-handed priest. I'm Jill Bearup and I'm an actor combatant, which means I am qualified to pretend to hit you on stage. And while I'm very fond of any kind of well-constructed fake fight, I do have a bit of a soft spot for the swords. And if you're an actor who's into stage combat, the fight between Diego Vega and Capitan Pascual is one of those fights that everyone tells you that you really need to see. And for good reason. So let's talk about it. The Mark of Zorro is a 1940 remake of the 1920 silent film of the same name, and the plot, it goeth thusly. This is Diego Vega, he is in Madrid being a soldier, dueling dudes and chatting up ladies when he is ordered home to California by his father. <laughs> Leave it there. And when you see it, think of me. In a land of gentle missions, happy peons, sleepy caballeros, and everlasting boredom. It turns out all is not well in California. His father is no longer the alcalde, who's basically the mayor. He has been replaced by this guy, who is awful and has Capitan Pascual backing him up with a naked sword in his hand all the time. Capitan Pascual may also be performing naked sword related activities, hem hem, with the alcalde's wife, Inez, but more on that in a moment. Diego thinks fast and turns on the foppish charm. When he goes to see his parents, everyone is horrified that Diego has turned into a dandy who doesn't care about anything, but actually he's decided that he's going to pretend not to care while dressing up as a masked vigilante. Sorrow. Steal from the rich, give to the poor, get his father back in charge, make it all good. So Diego breaks into the alcalde's house, disguises himself as a priest, has a wee chat with Quinteros' niece Lolita, there's an exciting chase scene during which he steals a bunch of money, it's a lot of fun. The alcalde, thinking that Don Alejandro, Diego's dad, is backing Zorro, tries to get the family via Diego on side by suggesting that Diego marry his niece Lolita. Lolita thinks that Diego is kind of a twit, and even after a moderately seductive dance scene she's still not on board, until she finds out that he's actually Zorro. Diego goes to meet the alcalde again, and Luis is on the verge of resigning when Capitan Pascual turns up and says, I will kill you if you resign. Diego duels Capitan Pascual and wins, but then is arrested by Quinteros, because Quinteros is not completely stupid, he's like, wait a second, wait a second, you're actually Zorro, aren't you? Mm. Diego breaks out of prison, there's a big fight, Quinteros resigns, Lolita and Diego live happily ever after, sword and ceiling, the end. It's a fun movie, and if you're allergic to black and white, I do believe there is a colorized version. But regardless, while there are plenty of exciting action scenes, and I love how closely The Mask of Zorro was taking notes on this, when it comes to the duels and the sword fights, nothing really beats Diego Vega and Capitan Pascual, Tyrone Power and Basil Rathbone going at it in the alcalde's office. It is marvellous, and it takes advantage of a number of film techniques which we will be talking about to make it look even more exciting, but my gosh, they don't make them like this anymore. Or at least, they don't often make them like this anymore. Shall we begin? I might be tempted, if I had a weapon. Pascual gets Diego a sword, which is a modern sport fencing saber in a movie supposedly set in the 18th century, but who's counting? And we take a moment for them to prepare themselves sartorially. Please note how much fancier and frillier Diego is than Pascual, as well as taking a moment for a candle-related gag. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the candle gag in the court jester? Well, you're welcome. Pascual is extremely confident going in, because Diego has spent the entire movie telling people how dreadfully fatiguing it is to have to exercise or run around with swords. The visual gag with the candles is the first thing that knocks Pascual's supreme confidence. Now, Pascual already doesn't like Diego, because it is strongly hinted that he either wants to have an affair with Luis Quinteros' wife Inés, or he's already having one. But Diego, who is much more charming than Pascual, has been trying to seduce Inés and persuade her to go to Spain with her husband, where he will meet her and they will carry on their secret affair. There are levels, is what I'm saying. So let's watch the opening shot at the speed at which it was delivered to us, and then we'll talk. We have a hero with us. Now that shot is 15 seconds long, and 15 seconds might not sound like a lot, and it really isn't in the course of a normal conversation, 
but when you're talking about fighting, modern editing would absolutely not let you get away with that. It's a 15 second shot, they don't start fighting right away, and they still manage to fit 17 moves in there. Of course, filming it would have taken slightly longer than that because the fight is undercranked, which means that instead of filming it at 24 frames a second, they filmed it at between 18 and 20 frames a second. So when they play it back, you are between 20 and 33 and a third percent faster. Same deal when Errol Flynn and Basil Rathbone are fighting each other while wearing tights in The Adventures of Robin Hood, for example. You are now watching at the slowest possible speed at which this could have been performed, and I hope that you appreciate that this is still really snappy. This is not slow at all. But obviously to make it as exciting as possible, they make it so blindingly fast that it's sometimes difficult to tell what's going on. Admittedly, when watching real fencing, especially foil fencing, I often find it difficult to figure out what was going on, and then the judge says, this happened, then this happened, then this happened, point to this person, I'm like, okay. From a choreography standpoint, Pasquale, as a villain, obviously makes the first move. Diego is not impressed by this and advances in response. Pasquale also has a tendency to make large circles with his sword. Yes, look at the sword, look at the shiny sword, ooh, but Diego isn't going to fall for that, he keeps looking at his opponent. The dramatic motions do suit Pasquale, though, because while he is demonstrably dangerous, he's also quite over the top. How could I refuse a man anything with a naked sword in his hand? Ha ha! So a wit has come to Los Angeles. Some men play with a club, or a monocle, or a snuff box. Churchmen finger their beads. I toy with a sword. Pasquale continues with some more cuts, pushes Diego back across the room, they circle for some variety, then off they go in the other direction, and it's only here that we actually cut. It's not slow by any means, but it is a more exploratory phrase, and they are out of distance. And while they don't lunge, that is more typical in stage combat because you want to save the lunges for the more dramatic moments. When we go to the next shot it feels more intense, partially because the angle has changed and so we can't tell what distance they are apart so they look closer together, and also because we get to fight around objects like the armillary sphere. Are you alright Diego? Ask the Capitan! And of course we get some quipping because you've got to have quipping. You can also see almost immediately that Diego's hair is starting to look less neat and Pasquale's hair gets increasingly flappy about as we progress. Yay for continuity. I'd like to spare a moment here to talk about Tyrone Power's performance because honestly, 10 out of 10. We spend a surprising amount of time with Diego in his non-Zorro persona in this film and the way he plays the pampered, spoiled brat is really funny and also just quite charming. I love The Mask of Zorro, it's one of my favourite movies, but the contrast between Alejandro trying to play a spoiled rich guy and Diego playing a spoiled rich guy is notable and I think I prefer Diego because he just makes it more charismatic. You can tell why Ines might be into him, like even if Diego does seem completely empty-headed. But the main thing that people talk about in this fight is the quality of the choreography, so let me throw my tuppence in on that. There's plenty of clangety clangety parry repost parry repost, but you also get more complicated things like seeding parries and doubles and things which look less impressively flashy, I suppose, but are actually much more difficult to do. So for example, you have a disengage, which is when you straighten your arm to pretend you're going to attack, your opponent comes to parry you, but boop, you nip underneath and stab them instead. If you continue this around, and they try to come back for you, that's called a double. Go underneath one way, and then go underneath another way, that's called a one-two, that will be important later. What I'm saying is, there's a lot of technique in this fight, and even though they have a stunt double for Tyrone Power on some occasions, when you can see him doing it, He's still doing a really good job, he's a very competent swordsman. Meanwhile in the fight, we up the tension with the broken bookcase, and then again on a new shot with Diego tripping and falling and Pasquale lunging in. Are you tiring, Diego? Oh, wait, I'll see, I'll take you on in a moment. But then we somewhat lower the tension again with another quip, and then immediately ramp it up again with another great phrase, and again, those disengages and counter disengages and more complex parries, and then we go in close for a bit of a core a core chat. The next will be better, my fancy clown. Please compare this to the more exploratory opening phrases. They are absolutely hammering at each other here. More stuff gets broken, we back Diego into a corner, but he makes a daring leap out of it. Oh, the captain's blade is not so firm. Still firm enough to run you through. Ooh -er. And you can tell that things are coming to a head because in the next phrase, Diego is injured. Not badly, but still, first blood is drawn by Pasquale. <laughs> I needed that scratch to awaken me. To finish, you'll like this. First of all, we have a double, and then we have a one-two. The first thing Diego does is go underneath and then all the way around to his original line, but he is parried. The second time, he goes underneath, but instead of continuing around, he goes back under again on the other side, and 
dead. They really don't make them like this anymore. In his 1962 memoir In and Out of Character, Basil Rathbone remarked, Parr was the most agile man with a sword I've ever faced before a camera. Tyrone could have fenced Errol Flynn into a cocked hat. Now part of that may have been that Basil Rathbone liked Tyrone Parr and didn't really necessarily get on with Errol Flynn, or possibly that Tyrone Parr wasn't drinking heavily between takes, but still. As iconic as Errol Flynn and Basil Rathbone are as a pair, and we will be discussing The Adventures of Robin Hood at some point if you would like to, I don't think the fights necessarily compare unfavourably to each other. Power is very good at what he does, the fight is fab, and honestly so is the movie. The Mark of Zorro is just a good time. And the fights are particularly good, but it does make you a little sad when you see the fights because they really don't make them like that anymore. They don't linger on a shot for 10 seconds or 15 seconds so you can really see what's going on in well-lit areas with stunt doubles for some of it, but using the real actors as much as possible. There are movies where they let the actors and the choreography shine in the fight scenes, but they don't make many like this anymore. Highly recommend the movie as a whole, and if you're at all into stage combat, you will not be disappointed by the fights either. This video was sponsored by me and my book, Just Stab Me Now, which contains two very brief fights because that's just how Caroline rolls. If you like extensive analysis on complicated movie sword fights, may I suggest you watch my Cliffs of Insanity Princess Bride video next? If you like Zorro, I do have a video on the Mask of Zorro, though on a fight with quite a different tone than this one. Hope you enjoyed the video, let me know if you'd like to see one on the adventures of Robin Hood, and I'll see you soon.